two and a half years here at 122. To, to, to be completely truthful, while I was sitting at the computer trying to think of what to say about Roth, my mind went blank. Let's tell you what, what kind of impression Roth has made on me. People always say very nice stuff about the retiree, but I'd rather be real since this is the last opportunity to try and set him straight. Please don't think I'm here because I like him. I'm being paid very well. In fact, the check just cleared this morning and he just gave me a six pack of Angry Orchard. So with that in mind, let us roast Roth and his accomplishment for 20, 25 years of honorable service. <clears throat> or is it 23? I think he slacked off about two of them. To begin with, to begin, little Ross Schilling came into the Navy on July 18th of 1991. What else happened during that time frame? A 6.0 earthquake hit Southern California. Riots broke out at the Guns N' Roses concert in St. Louis. Donald Trump proposes to Marla Maples and gives her a 7.5 carat diamond ring. Terminator 2 Judgment Day premiered, and Boris Yeltsin is sworn in as the first elected president of Russia Federation, and U.S. troops lead northern Iraq. A show of hands, is there anybody in here who was born after 1991? A couple of you. You're lucky. Wow, can't believe that he made it through boot camp in San Diego, which is now closed. But having accomplished this amazing feat, Roth, who joined the Navy to travel the world, then proceeded across the country to Millington, Tennessee, which is now closed as a school. Went to ATA school and completed the advanced first term avionics course, where he was advanced to third class petty officer and learned how to cheat the Dungeons and Dragons. Again, somehow or another, little Ross Schilling was extremely lucky, or properly cheated, and graduated as a full-fledged AT. Thinking that our young Roth could actually make something of himself, the Navy decided to send him to AMD here in Lemoore to be a radar technician. He managed to scrape by, becoming a CDI, making second class, and now is up for his real set of first orders. Being the good sailor that he was, and thinking he was in the Air Force, Roth tried everything he could but he was unable to get out of sea duty. In 1995, he made the drastic move across the hallway and ultimately reported to AMD Sea Optet, where he deployed aboard the USS Kitty Hawk in 1996 and the USS Constellation in 1999. Somehow, he earned his enlisted air warfare wings and was advanced again out of the first class petty officer. Yes, we actually had non-nuclear carriers, but they're now both decommissioned. See the pattern? Decom ships and closed bases. Man, you're old. You're a plank owner on Noah's Ark too, aren't you? Roth survives his tour on the mighty Kitty Hawk and the Connie and decides he needed to be challenged. Now most of you would think, when I say challenged, you would think I mean hard work or job. Au contraire. Roth transferred back across the hallway to AMD Lamore, now renamed Commander Strike Fighter Squadron Pacific Detachment AMD where he became a full systems QAR and honed his leadership and management skills with a large group of sailors and programs. Anyways, Roth's transfer was not just for the job, but because of tuition assistance benefits. And let, let me tell you, Roth took full advantage of his TA benefits and completed his associate's degree with Embry-Riddle University. While surviving once again at AMD, Roth is good at masking his true abilities. The now not so young Roth reported to his first real squadron Strike Fighter Squadron 147, the Argonauts, aboard the USS Carl Vinson, where he qualified as a full systems QAR, once again, became the QALPO, earned his surface warfare specialist, and received a safer flight designation. While on board, I guess the stars aligned, an exorcism was performed, holy water was sprinkled, and still, somehow, Roth was promoted to Chief Petty Officer in September of 2005. Geez, what was the Navy thinking? A year later, Roth was up for orders, yet once again, and after a short conversation with the detailer, he walked back down the street to his old offices at AIMD. He missed it, that, missed it that bad, he had to come back. But now, as a chief petty officer, he was mentoring junior sailors and training junior officers. Whether he finally, finally realized the chiefs belonged at sea, terminated shore duty, and returned to sea. Roth was soon haze gray and underway, reporting to CAG-14 as the Carrier Air Wing Flight Deck Coordinator, or DOG. During two deployments, he attempted to manhandle seven squadrons, 50 aircraft across three football fields, where yet again, the moons of Eldor aligned and he was promoted to Senior Chief Petty Officer. CAG-14 was soon disestablished in 2012, and yet another closure for Roth. 
Roth then reported to VFA 154 for a short stint where he served in juggled duties as the Avarm Admin and Maintenance Department LCPO. Finally, in June of 2013, Roth arrived here at his final tour, probably his most trying tour here, where he tried to shut down yet another command, not once, but twice. Roth worked as a safer flight of maintenance control, Avarm LCPO, and then stood up the Build Specials Work Center, where he built several Super Hornets from wind chimes that we have on the flight line to, to war fighting machines that we're sending out to the fleet today. While stationed here, with here at 122, I've been on a few deaths with Roth in El Centro and on the boat. Brooke, I'm not sure how you did it this long. I don't think I could live off collard green, collard greens, quinoa, and angry orchard. I think when we were in El Centro, I think we drank them out of angry orchard. So here we are. I guess I've dogged you enough. Nice to see you're still in a, a good sport. But thank you for talking to Mother Nature and to lowering the temperature today and giving us such a nice, great day. All aside, Roth, Roth has traveled the world in support of Operation Southern Watch, Operation Iraqi Freedom, Operation Enduring Freedom, New Dawn, Foul Eagle, Operation Tamadachi. He visited foreign lands in Bahrain, Jabal Ali, United Arab Emirates, Hobart, Tasmania, Singapore, South Korea, Malaysia, Guam, Japan, Australia, Hong Kong, Greece, and Portugal. Did I get them all? Bro, all kidding aside, I can't honestly say you were probably one of the best chiefs I've had the honor and privilege to work with. You're a senior chief who truly looks out for his sailors, a resident expert, and a true friend to his shipmates. Your career has made a huge impact on sailors that you mentored both junior and senior alike for years to come. Today is a sad day for the Navy, and then we have, have to say farewell to this extremely talented sailor. But as with all of us that are Navy careerists, there is a time that we are ready for that new challenge. And Roth, that is where you are today. I am very humbled and honored that you asked me to be your guest speaker today. I consider you a shipmate, but more importantly, I consider you a good, good friend and my brother. May God give blessings to you in your new journey that you are about to embark with, with your bride, Brooke, and family. To take a line from the movie Armageddon, I know that you will succeed in the civilian world because you don't know how to fail. Fair winds and following seas, shipmate. Thank you.